Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to look at using the completion of a square to find the inverse Laplace transform of this function, specifically 3s over s squared plus 2s plus 6. If we look at the first translation theorem, the first translation theorem would say that e to the at sine of kt, Laplace transform of that, would be equal to k over s minus a squared plus k squared. So everywhere we see an s, we replace it with s minus a. So that would be the Laplace transform of e to the at sine of kt. And then the second one, Laplace of e to the at cosine kt, it's going to look like s minus a over s minus a squared plus k squared. So when we're completing the square, we're trying to make our function look something like one of these two. So our goal is to turn this function into a completed square in the denominator, and then if it's got an s in it, we want it to look like this. If it doesn't have an s in it, we just want it to look something like this. So let's look at our example. So we want to complete this square to find the Laplace transform of this function. All right, so look at that bottom. This is going to be 3s over, and completing the square means s squared plus 2s plus, well, what do we do? We take half of this 2, so 2 over 2. So plus 1 squared minus 1 squared and then plus 6 is still down there in the bottom. So that's going to complete our square. Now what do we do? We say that this is going to be 3s over s plus 1 quantity squared. plus 5. All right, so this is a completed square. s squared plus 1 turns out to be s squared plus 2s plus 1. That's what I have here, s squared plus 2s plus 1. Now, I've done 6 minus 1 to make sure that adding 1 and subtracting 1 doesn't really change my denominator. I'm just adding 0. Now, I've got a completed square, but it doesn't quite look like what it should for a cosine transform. A cosine transform needs to have s plus 1 right here. So we don't have a plus 1 right here. We need a plus 1 right there. So what can we do is do the same trick on the inside here. We're going to add and subtract a 1. So it's a plus 1 minus 1 inside that parentheses. So we just put a parentheses around that. All right, so this is going to be 3 times s plus 1 minus 3 when I distribute that 3 to the negative 1 and pull it off to the right-hand side. So this is 3s plus 1 minus 3 divided by s plus 1 squared plus 5. So now this looks like a cosine transform and this looks like a sine transform. So let's break up that numerator to get them by themselves. Pull the 3 down front. That'll be s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 5 minus, we'll pull the 3 out front here, 1 over, that's going to be s plus 1 squared plus 5. This one in here is just going to be a cosine transform. That's just the cosine kt times e to the at. So this is going to go back to a here is equal to negative 1, so a equals negative 1, and k is equal to square root of 5, so k equals square root of 5. So this Laplace transform, when I do the inverse Laplace, inverse Laplace is going to equal 3 e to the negative t cosine square root of 5t minus 3. Now this second term, the cosine transform needs a k in the top. And here k again is square root of 5. So k is square root of 5. Again a is negative 1. So I don't have a square root of 5 in the numerator, so what we're going to do is we're going to put one up there in the numerator. So put a square root of 5 right there. 
which means I need to divide out front by square root of 5. Now this is exactly e to the negative t sine of square root 5t, so this is going to be 3 over square root of 5 e to the negative t sine square root of 5t. So that's our inverse Laplace transform of the function that we started with.